Hello audience. Greetings of the day. Today we will discuss about the different topologies used in the electromagnetic interference filter generally known as EMI filter. Let's start with the first question in our mind. Why do we need EMI filters? One reason is that regulatory agency requirements dictate that conducted and radiated emissions be constrained below specified limits, but the device must also comply with immunity or transient requirements. Designers often forget that an EMI filter can assist in meeting immunity and fast transients requirements and radiated emissions as well. Even for military or aerospace equipment, they must be protected from failure due to EMI noise and data security requirements may call for filters to protect classified data. Contractual requirements imply or specify filters. Essentially, an AC power or mains EMI filter is a low-pass filter that blocks the flow of noise while passing the desired input which can be DC or 50 Hz or 60 Hz or 400 Hz power frequency. An ideal EMI filter will reduce the amplitude of all frequency signals greater than the filter cutoff frequency. The cutoff frequency is the frequency between the signal's pass band and the reject bands at 3 dB attenuation below the acceptance line. The measure of a filter's ability to reduce a given signal level is insertion loss or attenuation. A power line or main ZMI filter is placed at the power entry point of the equipment that it is being installed into to prevent noise from exiting or entering the equipment. Now we will go for EMI filter configurations. Even though EMI filter circuits are diverse, they are composed of equivalent differential mode filters and equivalent common mode filters that are based on basic filtering circuits that is capacitance filter, inductor filter, inductor and capacitance filter, capacitance and inductor filter, bi-type filter and T-type filter as shown in figure. The basic filtering circuits provide different insertion loss, I, L, rates, 20 dB per decade for C and L filters, 40 dB per decade for C, L and L, C filters and 60 dB per decade for Pi and Qi filters. However, the insertion loss rates of the filters are strongly dependent on the impedances seen at either ends of the filter circuit. The filter behavior can be significantly affected if the terminating impedances at both ends are not appropriate. The C filter will provide 20 dB per decade insertion loss rate with a high impedance system but it is ineffective if it is employed in a low impedance system. On the other hand, the L filter is suitable for a low impedance system but not for a high impedance system. To gain higher insertion loss rates, CL, LC, BI and T filters need to be used. Again, to prevent the ineffectiveness of the filter performances, filter configurations should be chosen appropriately with their connecting impedances at both ends. The appropriate impedances for basic filter configurations are summarized in figure. After understanding the EMI filter configurations, we will discuss dash. How to determine which configuration to use. 1. Impedance mismatch. Two different circuit configurations exist for the higher order filters in figures. One aspect of filter design is impedance mismatch. So, which one should the designer use? If the designer has access to computer simulation software, then it can be used to determine the best configuration. However, if a simulation program is not available, then there is a simple rule of thumb that can be used to assist the designer. The first filter element nearest the source, or load end, should be selected to provide the highest possible mismatch at EMI frequencies. Typically, this means that if the source or load impedance is low, 100 ohms, the first filter element should be capacitive. This provides the designer an extremely efficient design with the least number of stages or components. After impedance matching, we will discuss on the common mode currents versus differential mode currents. Filters are not only for conducted emissions, 
but also help in meeting radiated emissions levels by controlling what propagate from the mains power cable and also helps in immunity issues like induced RF, radio frequency, signals and transients like electrical fast transients, EFT. In all circuits, both common mode, CM, and differential mode, DM, currents are present. There is a significant difference between the two. Given a pair of transmission lines and a return path, one or the other mode will exist, usually both. Differential mode signals carry data or signal of interest, information. Common mode is an undesired side effect from differential mode transmission and is most troublesome for electromagnetic compatibility. When using simulation software to predict emissions, differential mode analysis is usually the form of analysis used. It is impossible to predict radiated emissions based solely on differential mode, transmission line, currents. Common mode currents are the primary source of EMI. If only calculating differential mode currents, one can severely underpredict anticipated radiated emissions since numerous factors and parasitic parameters are involved in the creation of common mode currents from differential mode voltage sources. These parameters usually cannot be easily anticipated and are present in the formation of power surges in the power and return planes during edge switching times. Differential mode current is the component of RF energy present on both the signal and return paths that is equal and opposite of each other. If a 180 degrees phase shift is established precisely, RF differential mode currents will be cancelled. Common mode effects may however, be developed because of ground bounce and power plane fluctuation caused by components drawing current from a power distribution network. Using differential mode signaling, a device sends out current that is received by a load. An equal value of return current must be present. These two currents, traveling in opposite directions, represent standard differential mode operation. Differential mode filtering involves placing capacitors between lines and or an inductor in series with either the high or the low side of the line. Common mode current is the component of RF energy that is present on both signal and return paths, often in common phase to each other. The measured RF field due to common mode currents will be the sum of the currents that exist in both the signal and return trace. This summation could be substantial. Common mode currents are generated by any imbalance in the circuit. Radiated emissions are the result of such imbalance. Common mode filtering involves capacitors to ground or a common mode inductor in series with both side of the line or lines. A common mode inductor does not affect differential mode currents except for whatever imperfect coupling exists, that is, leakage inductance. It is best to split the inductor evenly on both sides of the transmission line to maintain balance in the circuit. This is important for both common mode and common mode rejection ratio of the circuit. Mutual inductance will maximize the impedance to common mode noise. Because these are two different noise current modes of propagation, it is important to determine which type of noise current exists so that proper filtering can be implemented for maximum efficiency and cost. This is important for both common mode and common mode rejection ratio of the circuit. One can see that most typical filter configurations contains both common mode and differential mode filtering. There are two types of noise coupling, one is radiated and another one is conducted. Radiated and conducted noise has a tendency for mutual transformation through a wire or trace by a process termed crosstalk. Crosstalk is observed where there are many wires or traces located in close proximity. Therefore, even if conducted noise is only a problem at one location, you cannot completely ignore the possibility of radiated coupling to another location. So, if a filter circuit is incorporated on a printed circuit board, then proper design and layout techniques must be done such as avoiding routing of traces parallel to each other, providing sufficient separation between traces to minimize inductive coupling or routing adjacent layers microstrip or strip line, orthogonally to each other to prevent noise coupling between traces. 
However, with the use of a metal shield, crosstalk core radiated noise coupling crosstalk is controlled. Other things to consider are the high frequency parasitic and resonance effects. Real inductors and capacitors fall short in performance when compared to theoretical models. Some of this is due to the actual inductor and capacitor elements themselves, for example lead inductance, winding capacitance, resistance effects, etc., while others are caused by the circuit board layout, packaging or wiring. Changing to a different EMI filter can affect the radiated emission characteristic because of these parasitic and resonance effects. So, when you change from a filter that passes testing, one must retest for not only conducted emissions, but also retest for radiated emission as the high frequency effects may not be the same between the two filters especially since most commercial filters are never tested beyond 30 MHz. The filter should be placed directly at the exit point of the wire from the product. Good effective separation is essential. The separation prevents coupling of noise back into the input wires circumventing and nullifying the effects of the filter. This would be an excellent choice for an AC inlet mounted EMI filter or power entry module filter. Avoid improper lead routing. Do not bundle or physically cross filter input and output wires. Again, with the leads physically crossing each other, it nullifies the effectiveness of the filter due crosstalk between wires as was discussed earlier. Provide a low impedance ground for the filter. It is imperative that the EMI filter mounting surface be clean and unpainted, for example conductive surface. Good filter grounding is an important factor for common mode filtering performance of the filter. A poor filter bond limits the filtering to chassis by adding series impedance, thus changing resonance effects and filtering capability of the common mode capacitors. So now, we can conclude. The optimal filter configuration and the correct filter component values can be chosen. The incorrect filter configuration leads to non-optimal filter attenuation. Commercial filters are available for various applications with different insertion loss. There are other features to consider like Earth leakage Ambient temperature Overload characteristics We Croydon Services Private Limited, taken care of the end, too and electromagnetic interference filter design solutions and product manufacturing as per your requirement. You can reach us with your electromagnetic interference filter requirement on our contact email address, info at Thank you very much.